day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. For the sovereign rule, the sovereign reign, come on, and the sovereign control come on. of you yeah. as a member of the kingdom. Come on now. And, and you know, he asks you to do something, whether you have knowledge or whether you understand it or whether you agree with it, that has nothing to do with it. Come on. When the king speaks, has he is he honored with obedience? Come on. Hey, hey, Bishop, remember that one time when Jesus said, hey, Brother Isaac, I think we said a couple of weeks ago, maybe a few more than that, when Jesus said, who, who can, who, who's here that can convince me or convict yeah. me of sin? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's when you want to get to that point. <laughs> Is there anybody can, that, that can point out anything or any point where he violated or when it gets wrong? <laughs> and, we, and listen now, and we are called into a oneness with him. Come on. Don't be confused now. It, it is possible for you. If you look at Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16. Yes, sir. That's what he says. He said, if you walk in the spirit, you won't feel a lot of flesh. Translation. If you walk in the spirit, sin won't have dominion over you. Woo! Amen. That's a blessing. Hey, it's 11, it's 11 o'clock, y'all. <laughs> there, there, there's a simple concept that I think is, I think we need to have to embrace and really eat. That God is love. Yes, sir. And when we interact with people in ministry, if we're not interacting from that perspective, we're really not trafficking in God. Right. And That's that, becomes, yeah. that becomes, a, I, I think, to me, it's becoming more and more evident. Yes, sir. So, that we need to pray for that. When we talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost, we, we're talking about being filled with the Spirit of God, and God is love. Yes, sir. But there's a compassion that comes with that. He said he looked upon the masses, he had compassion of them, upon them and healed them of their affliction. And that's the portion that I think I have in time past been a little bit lacking in because I got kind of caught up in the, the mechanics of Christianity, in, 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 the, in the revelation of the knowledge of the Word. Yes, sir. I forgot about what Grandma knew. And that Come, was on. Come on now. Himself. Come on, the love of Christ constrained. They love the Lord. They Come knew on, the Lord. Man. They loved him. And uh that's what really gave them the power that they had. So my prayer for myself this day is that the Lord fill me with his Holy Ghost. Fill well, me with his love, for his compassion for his creation. So I can okay. honestly yeah, but he has. He, he has heard. done that. He's already done that. Yes, sir. We just gotta extrapolate. We gotta pull it out. Yeah. There you go. That's it. I agree with that 100 percent And in, in my fact, we can do this. We can do this communion real quick. Cause we are going over way past the time, and, and I want y'all guys there to come back. <laughs> so, so can we do the communion, Elder? If you don't yeah, mind. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think Bishop went to get his, his uh, portion. You got yours, Brother Addison? I'm oh, getting oh, ready oh. to go grab it right hold now. Up, hold on. Let me stop you for communion for a minute. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead, Addison. Go get your stuff while you're talking. Go get your stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out with this communion thing. So, you know, I told you guys something about communion. Uh, and I don't know why I can get... I'm, I'm going to leave everybody on Facebook. Bye. I'm going to close out the Facebook one. <laughs> I did some uh, research on this thing about communion. And so I ask people, what's the purpose of communion? Did you want us to answer that, or you got to ask? You, what, what you gonna tell them? Well, I want to know if we're all on the same page when it comes down. What is this actual purpose? What is God? What is Jesus instructing to <clears throat> to uh, do this and remember to, to perpetuate this? Uh, What he did for, for a memorial. Right. You know, and, and Bishop, before you answer that, I was just wondering, isn't it also possible, too, that you remember like when ju judges came in and said that the people did not know God? 
I mean, that's one of the things that remembers and continue to make sure that that stays on perpetually. But go ahead, I just just want to throw that in there. So, so when, when we when we are when we are celebrating communion, what are we actually celebrating? In accordance with Paul, he said he, he commemorated his death. When his Tilly resurrection. Killed. No, actually, Paul said his death. I thought it was kind of odd too, but yeah. uh. Yeah. It, it, that scripture said that we might um, remember the, in remembrance of his death until he comes. comes to yeah. that the purpose of his death did he come, meaning that he rose from the dead, resurrection, and he's coming back again. So he said, I want you remember that one scripture that said, When I come back, will I find faith on earth? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So, so. So he's saying, I need y'all to stay focused on what I did and why I did it. And I still think it also lies over the fact is that he telling us to die daily is remembering to die to ourselves, right? Because I know that's what he said that said without, it wasn't for the fact that a seed dies. It remains alone. It remains alone. Yep. So yeah. that, the, the spirit of God had to be released through it just like we're a seed. The spirit, his spirit had to be released through his death. Yes, sir. So when he died and went in the ground, ground then his spirit was released and not imparted to every believer. Every believer. So, you know, that's a beautiful analogy that he gave, gives us, though, because it's a fact. Uh, yeah. One corn can't kernel of corn, preachers and stocks are going, you know. Yes, sir. So, so, so it, it's, it's, and that's how we are. We receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but but that one one uh, that one scripture I think is in uh this is the one we normally go through when we uh look at First Corinthians. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Twinkle, when it talks about uh being one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it says that we remember him in his death until he yeah, and uh, that we acknowledge his death until he he returns. Cause he's coming back. That's yeah. 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 Yeah, and the work that he's done, and in the fact, I, I, and that that's what that was the one thing that we had that uh. Uh, okay, so so let me ask you a question. Let's see, that's what I'm saying. As we get further on into maturity and growth, it becomes important to us. It becomes critically important to us to no longer remain children in, in, in what we in our understanding. Mm -hmm. so I, I'll just ask you a very simple question because it, for me, it's become a very serious matter. Your question is. How does celebrating Jesus' death benefit you? <laughs> but like I said, one thing we were talking about was the fact that unless a seed dies, right, his death birthed me. And he said, remember that. He gave his sacrifice. I mean, that would go to John 3, 16, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, who someone believes in him, so not perish for everlasting life. His death gave me life. Well, if I if now the scripture is clear now that his death provided a means of reconciliation between you and God. Yes, sir. Okay, so all Jesus' death though atone for your sin propitiates God and allow for you to be brought back to God without any uh, consequences of your past yes sir the dead man don't have any consequences so, so dead man sin. don't worry about dying <laughs> there you go. Hello, hello, hello. Like but, but listen, but now there that you're you back with God, if you continue to live the way you lived before He died, you put yourself in the same situation. Right. Listen to me carefully. I want to get what I'm saying. You were an enemy of God before Christ died for you. You were enemy of God because the scripture said because you were enemy in your mind by wicked works. Yes, sir. If after you're reconciled to God, what happens if you continue to live a wicked life? Then are you really reconciled? That's my point. So here's my point. 
we are we don't we don't grasp that that, that Jesus there are two elements to his life to why God sent him. There is his death. And there is the thing that Pastor Taylor is talking about. When the seed falls to the ground and dies, that which is inside of the seed is released. Yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. Death also releases the life of God, making the life of God available to you. Mm. The full potential you of you. If a seed Except the grain of corn falls to the ground and die in the body alone. Does that apply to Jesus or does that also apply to you? It does. Because we're one, he's in the body. The, the, the true seed, though, the seed that he spoke in terms of was Jesus himself. Yeah. You know, Elder uh, and, and, and Bishop, what, what comes to my mind is the moment we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's no different than that seed being planted. Now that seed has to germinate. And then the shoot comes out. Come on. And then it begins to form into what the potential of it has. So when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, yes. we begin to germinate Come on. as we renew our mind. Yes. And we begin to grow. Yes. And the fullness mm. of what we are well, begins to manifest. Come on. But only uh -huh. until we die yes, sir. in Christ. Yes, sir. And this, like this, 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 this selfishness. Come on, yeah. So, Bishop. I truly appreciate you bringing this point across because it really is in my mind's eye and the revelation of this dying. Well, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring something to the closure now. <laughs> I think Jesus intended that every time you celebrate communion, the reason that he is asking you to remember him in his death, because you have to understand what the scripture says. It said that God made him to be sin for us. Yes. He said when he does the communion, this is my body which is broken, not for me. Yes. This is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood that will pour it out which is said for you. What I think he's really telling you to do is, I'm doing this, so that every time you celebrate it, you'll understand that what you're really celebrating is what God has done to you in me. Mm. That God has put you to death with me. Mm. It's not my death. I listen, I'm, I'm going to die and be raised up and go back to glory. I got to get it in your thick head that you are dead. Yes. Amen. I think I think that's I think the way you put that is pretty good. You gotta get your thick head. Because that's what has to be received. You have to receive it. You have to receive it. You have to because it's our thought processes that determine our, our, our reality. It forms our reality. It's, as you believe, that's how it's gonna be under you. And so at some point we really come to be, believe to accept the fact that Jesus died for our sins and that as a result of what he did, we are not reconnected to the Father. Come on. As a result of what he did. Not as a result of what we did or what we're gonna do, but it is, it's, it's Addison also mentioned sin. That's so far behind us. That's not an issue, brother. <laughs> hey, no, the sin debt was paid. The sin debt was paid up, by what he did on the cross. Yeah. When you pick up that cup and you pick up that piece of bread, what you what, what you really ought to be what you really ought to be focusing on is, is that see the moment that Jesus became a human being, a man. God has already done a work of joining humanity to divinity. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That, that this this is what makes the whole thing work. When Jesus becomes, when the Word becomes flesh, He, God, joins Himself to man, Come and on. now He's going to solve the humanity problem by dealing with Christ. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What happens to Christ now? This is why He can say. Then why we can say Jesus died on the cross for our sins. 
This is why we are setting ways of sin and death. Because Amen. Jesus had paid the whole, he had done everything that would do to us. God solved that problem by dealing with him. Come on. Come on. When you pick up that piece of bread and pick up that communion, what you are telling God is, is that I embrace what you have done to me and your son, that I now believe that you have put me to death. Woo! The old man is put to death, and now the scripture can be realized, for he that is dead is free from sin. Mm. Oh, free from sin. Come on, man. Come on. You know, uh, the, the thing that here also comes to mind is that he was raised with all power in his hands. So we acknowledge and we experience the suffering, and so uh -huh. we also experience the, the power of his resurrection. That's it. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe, these signs should be following them. When he says, these works and greater shall you do, these works and greater we should be doing. So I, I, I think, yeah, but it's still a mental thing because if we doubt, if we don't really receive it mentally, if we are cognitively so, it doesn't manifest itself. But right. yeah, we are those creations, those new creations that he spoke of is sitting right here in these various rooms on the screen. And uh, we are the sons of God. Yes, sir. We, we are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. Let me, just, let me, let me read something to you. I'm going to read the first thing. And what I hear sometimes when we have these discussions, I hear little tidbits of things that say, we'll say we did, but then we'll, 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 we'll say something else that say we don't really believe we're dead. Mm. Mm. You understand me? We'll contradict ourselves. Now listen to what Colossians said. If then ye be risen with Christ. Yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. Risen with Christ. Uh -huh. How can you be raised with Christ if you ain't dead with Christ? <laughs> Amen. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. For Christ sitting on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things beneath. Now get this, verse 3. For ye are dead. Yes, sir. Not might be dead. Not going to die. Not will be. Not expecting to die. Not hoping to die. Not struggling to die. As far as God is concerned, you are already dead. <laughs> In your life, look, God Almighty. <laughs> He's here with Christ in God. <laughs> with Christ, who is our life. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you celebrate communion, what you're celebrating is your full union with him, which means that when he says, well, you do so the Lord's death, what, he, what, what you really need to understand is, is that do you do show your death with the Lord till he comes. Woo! That was Colossians 1 through 4. Amen. Colossians you, you, 3. You show the Lord death. You show your death with the Lord. And once you start embracing and reprogramming your mind that the old you, the old wretched sin for you, the old old hopping, liquor drinking, marijuana smoking, woman chasing, gambling, you is dead. Woo! And that you are a new creature in Christ, raised up with him. Woo. And not only are you raised up with him, but Ephesians say we are made to sit together in heavenly places. Amen. In, in Christ. In Christ. Yeah. Our problem is, we continue to think about ourselves in the same fashion that we were before we got saved. Woo. And then we can't understand why we can't get no fruit in our life. Mm. Amen. Amen. He said, don't no, believe you did. Then you'll make excuses when your old man rise up and you sin. Mm. You'll say ain't nobody perfect. Come on. You'll you say somebody is, not coming up, still a man from the ways down. I'm like, what that mean? What that mean? <laughs> Dead well, man I, don't I, feel I, no I've ways been dealing down. with this this all week, uh, uh, Bishop, in in the fact of uh, extrapolating what's in my spirit because my in my spirit is the fullness of Christ. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to get my mind wrapped around that so that I can extrapolate Come on. what's in there into my soulless realm to affect change in my life and what's around me. And so I've been dealing with that this week, man, and it's 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 been it's it's been blessing me in the fact that when 
when the revelation comes for the different areas of my life, then the spirit makes the change. Makes the change. Uh, it's the uh, spirit that gives life. Amen. And so, man, it's, it's just been dealing with me this week, man. And I'm telling you, I've been, I've just been in this euphoric state that, that God is, is, is just showing me these things. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so excited. Let me ask you this question. This. What you just shared with us, that's revelation of God on your part, right? You don't need to sit down and read this anywhere, right? No, no. I'm going to tell you why I'm excited about that if I can. Because it validates the same words I'm hearing. What you are saying is the same thing I've heard. I've been hearing for, 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 for months. If we can receive this thing, really, you, when you keep saying pull it out of your, your, your spirit, if you can bring it into that, that, that mind, then it's going to manifest. And that's what he keeps telling me. The truths are there. The truths are known. It's just difficult to receive them mentally. You know, and I think that it's talking right. about being um, um, uh, guilt, having our guilt sprinkled with the blood of Christ, knowing that we are raised in the power of his resurrection and convincing our vessels for the most part that the healing has already taken place. Yeah. We have been restored. We literally have been restored to our Father spiritually. We are one with our God. Yes, sir. And that's real. That's real. But man, extrapolating on that. <laughs> and, and I Elder, another thing too, I'll think about the call fact you that right back. You you quoted these signs to follow us. Amen, man. Are they following the first in the spirit and then they follow manifest in the flesh? If you cannot receive it in the spirit, they won't. <laughs> they won't. That's well, won't. Won't. well, if you can't believe it. That's it. Message. Get, get it. If you don't believe God can take you into the promised land, you ain't you can't. going. <laughs> you can't get there. So and, that, and that, I believe that is a that's the promised land that was foreshadowed. Yes, sir. It's the place that He's taking us is not the housing land we were preaching in church, but it was the spiritual no, no, no. place. No, no. It's a spiritual no, place that He no, promised no. us. It's the fullness that of Christ that He's going to take us into. Say again. He's going to take us into the fullness of Christ. Amen. That's man. The promised land. That's the promise. Lord, yeah. help us, man. We get there. You better do that communion because I don't think we're going to leave it without. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amen, man. Amen. amen. We won't even notice. We won't even notice. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think Brother Addison's wife noticed. <laughs> oh, every time you go, you oh. No, they hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so go ahead and do this communion. Man, you even know. Uh, let me see. <laughs> you want to wait for Bishop uh, to come back? Uh, I thought he already had his. It was Alex to wait for. I thought he did. But he, I don't think he's he, he's not in his screenshot. No, he walked in get, get up to get yeah, something. He, he left it. I'm not. I feel if he went I think well, this, the first this, time he went this, to get a book. This is exciting. It is. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 can I, can I ask you guys something real quick? Yes, sir. I've been here since since uh, 2000. And while we were talking, I saw the first hummingbird ever since I've been here fly up to my window wow. while, while we were ministering. And I, my question is, have you guys seen a hummingbird since you've been here? I had. I had. No. I'm trying to blew me away. I, it was literally... Looking right at my window, looking in, and <laughs> it, it 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 just blew. It it was such to where I left and went in the back to go tell my wife. <laughs> it was that profound. Praise God! Wow, that that was that was awesome. That was a, I'm taking it as a sign. That's what I'm doing. Hey man, you're just receiving this one. So I got the verse for y'all before we go. Take this verse with me. Ephesians chapter four. Verse number 24. One second, I got it. There's 24. You see it? I see it. He says, hmm. and that you put on the new man. Is created in 
and true holiness. That this new creature that we are is not something that is going to be. Come on, man. He's created in righteousness yes. and true holiness. Yes. Yes. Out yes. the gate. Woo. So what we got to do now is that we got to get the if you stay with Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, it have told you and put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Renewed See, it is the divine knowledge of God that allows the new man to operate in the earth the way God intended. Amen. You got a new man, you got a new computer, and no operating system. Woo! <laughs> Amen. Or you got a new computer, with an old virus infected hard drive. Yes. Amen. That's it right there. Hey, I, and then you want to figure out how the machine acting up. Right. You ain't taking no updates either. <laughs> get no updates. No, no listen. Ain't getting no patches. Ain't getting. So you got to continually keep this thing updated. Woo. Truth. So that you always stay relevant. Come on. And that's lost in dying world. Come Amen. on. Yeah, and, and, and I, and I so know that encompasses us knowing why we were created in the first place or why we're here. Hey Amen. You saw. Uh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, all I know is the moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in my life, that was the fullness of time. Woo. That was uh, 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 yeah. a moment of Kairos. Come on. Divine time. Divine time, bro. And it's been that way since. Yeah. And in fact, all those people that came in contact with. Some good, some bad, because <laughs> like I said, it's it's been look, that seed's been germinating. Come on now. You and know, look, and uh and I, I like it the can only see being sold though, too. Yeah. Hey, look here, uh, the grounds I, on the background. <laughs> I, I had a pick on tree in my yard. <laughs> At my house when I first moved in. <laughs> Kelly Young. Pecan tree, I was going to cut it down because it got big, was very green, never bore any pecan. So I was going to cut it down and plant something else. The guy said, man, don't cut the pecan tree down. I said, why? He said, because it take a pecan tree eight years mm. as a minimum for a bell pecan. Woo. Now here's the point. You see, the other thing that we don't embrace is, is that we don't believe in spiritual maturity. Uh-huh. And the reason that we don't believe in spiritual maturity is because you'll never see it if there's no discipleship. Wow. Without discipleship, you will never see spiritual maturity. Hmm. And that will leave you to believe that God can't lead you into this land of promise. Come on. That because you fail to see it, it becomes the giants in the land. Yeah. You begin to rely on self. You look away from God, you start looking around at the failures and the flaws and the shortcomings and the weaknesses of other people, and you say it can't be done. Yeah. Amen. Hello. You enter into a state of unbelief. Come on now. Mm, God forbid. That's what I'm saying. Unbelief. You sound greater, shit, you do. Greater. We we 1130 now. I know we can do it's a good time to cut it right here. 1130. All right, all right. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, he said, Take all of you. This is my body which shall be broken for you. Do this and remember to me. And so they ate. I was a big cup you got there, Elder. I don't know if you can pay to drink all that out here. <laughs> No, I just oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, the double one. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. I know, right? I got six of them. I thought you had a big cup in front of them one time. Mm -mm, no, no, I'll play that for later. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when someone was in it, like he, he, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Hey, drink, all of you, but this is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It shall be shed for you and for all men, so that sin may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. But so they took the cup and they drank. 
Amen. Communion cup four. So in the tradition of my Catholic friends, so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen. Mm. Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. Is that, is that your closing prayer? You got a prayer you want to close out? That was good enough. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that said it all. It said it all. Because now Elder can...